Now, the next phase of exhumation of bodies in the vast Shakahola forest will resume in March. Chief Government Pathologist Dr. Johansen Odor also announced that DNA results from some of the 429 bodies exhumed from the forest will be out next week to allow the release of bodies to families for interment. Dr. Odor was speaking on the sidelines of this year's Kemri Scientific and Health Conference as Emily Chibet now reports. Closure could be closer for some of the families of the 449 victims of the Shakahola massacre. Chief Government Pathologist Dr. Johansen Odwar says families whose DNA results will be out by next week will be allowed to proceed with proper burial of their kin. The pathologist said the multisectoral team that is involved in the Shakahola exercise will be meeting in the coming week ahead of the next phase of exhumations. So far we've not gotten uh, the report of DNA but we understand there are, there are some DNAs here already, I don't know the number, which I think in a week's time we are going to, to sit down and uh, look at them and, and proceed um, back to, to Malindi so that we can try to release the number of uh, bodies which uh, uh, have been identified. The pathologist says one of the biggest challenges in the identification process is lack of cooperation from family members due to stigma around the cause of death, which was linked to cultism. He says that slowed down the identification process. We could see from only look that this person stabbed to death based on their, you know, they, 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 were, they were thin, very thin. Uh, upon autopsy, uh, fat, body fat was diminished completely. The organs which you usually look at and you can tell us that this person uh, was starving and we are just noting them and documenting them for the purpose of, of uh, helping the court in prosecution. Forensics experts warning those who kill and bury bodies to conceal evidence that science will soon catch up with them, even if it takes years. Forensic crime investigation is not just a laboratory solution. It starts from the crime scene itself. And these personnel at the crime scene, they should be able to identify the evidential material. They should know how to package the evidential materials, the issues of storage. <laughs> I read a lot and, uh... Dr. Udwar, who was a lead pathologist in the Shakahola massacre, shared some light moments away from work. His love for books, music and travelling. When you look at me, how do I look? <laughs> <laughs> like a disturbed person. <laughs> 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 of course, uh, death uh, is not a very good thing, isn't it? Yeah? And we are all humans. I don't think anyone will be happy when you see people dead, isn't it? Yeah? You won't, you're actually, the reason why uh, there's advances in health is so that people live longer and longer and longer, isn't it? Yeah? Um, when you are in death situations, of course uh, you, you can get emotional also. The scientist cited lack of criminal database in the country as one of the reasons criminal cases delay and some criminals in some cases get away with murder. As scientists and health experts meet during this year's Kemri Scientific and Health Conference here in Nairobi, national government have been called to support science even as they equip forensic laboratories to ease human identification when need arises. Emily Chabet, Citizen TV, Nairobi.